Hello people, I'm Ginny Metherall, I am a fourth generation witch. Today's video is of course my ever popular almanac series and we're going to be looking at witchcraft throughout the whole month of October. What to do, when to do it and how October's energies might affect those spells. As with all these videos, I'd like to give a general overview for the whole month of October, and from there we'll dive down into the nitty gritty daily detail, and I'll give you the important events and dates that are happening throughout October. Now, October is synonymous with that incredibly wonderful and one of my favourite Sabbaths, Halloween, Son, however you wish to celebrate it. Halloween is of course a high point in a witchcraft year and due to that I'm not going to discuss too much about Halloween in this video and I will be dedicating my own video to the Sabbath of Halloween. October is of course a month of migrations. The swallows are leaving, the field fairs and red wings are arriving, the eels are migrating and of course we do a little bit of migrating ourselves by going trick-or-treating, migrating round our neighbours I say. I love the eel migration on this month because we know so little about these mysterious creatures. The eels have spent up to 14 years in our lakes and rivers and streams and suddenly they decide, we don't know how or why or what cycle they decide at, apart from the fact that obviously they want to go and spawn, to leave our shores and head on this huge migration to the Sargasso Sea, which is the only sea not surrounded by any land surrounded by currents. It's filled with the sargassum seaweed, which is the perfect place for them to spawn. We think. We don't know, because we've never seen it happen. During the migration, they become silver eels, so their eyes become huge and wide to cope with the darkness of the sargassum forests. Their stomachs dissolve so that they live on their own fat reserves, and they become silver that they cannot be seen so easily in the water. Oh, I love a bit of the meal migration, it's one of my favourites. They're following an age-old impulse and we really don't know anything about it. Of course, humans also migrate in their own way. As I said, we can migrate through trick-or-treating. This is a true Gaelic and Celtic tradition. When the Irish had their mass migration during the famine, they went over, of course, to America and imported this tradition of trick-or-treating and the Americans bought it back in spades to this land. When I was growing up, I was the only person I knew who held a Halloween party because one of my siblings was born on Halloween. And everyone said, oh my God, how strange, that's really odd. You're trick-or-treating, having a Halloween party. Are you American? And we're like, oh, no, no, no. Um, but I loved it and I have continued having a Halloween party every single year. October is also the time, if I can reach them, for apples and apple day is officially on the 21st we'll more about that later i did want to talk a little bit about the witchcraft associated with apples because they are a really ingrained part of traditional witchcraft in this country traditionally apples were used as a token of fidelity and love this is quite a victorian people say but actually it goes back to the ancient greeks who used apples think of aphrodite's apple if anyone knows a story. Look it up on Wikipedia because I don't have time to go into that here. Apples are also incredibly pagan. They were one of the most important staple crops of our ancestors and apple trees were pretty much considered sacred. For example, the medieval law of stealing one apple was a fine of two ounces of silver, which is a huge amount, I think. I mean, that sounds a huge amount. I don't think I could come up with two ounces of silver. Surely that's a peasant's lifetime income. The great wizard Merlin of Arthurian legend, who I thoroughly believe existed, by the way, don't tell me otherwise. In fact, I think I have spoken to him in the world of spirit. Very interesting person, may I say. Merlin was the person who lived in a glass castle on the Isle of Avalon. 
His castle was surrounded by apple trees and Merlin's apples were said to be in fruit all year round. It is here that Nimue and Morgan Le Fay, who is King Arthur's half-sister, came to the Isle of Avalon to study under the great wizard Merlin. And in fact, when King Arthur was mortally wounded in battle, Morgan Le Fay brought him to the Isle of Avalon and to Merlin's castle. He was put to sleep by Merlin underneath the apple trees, where he sleeps still until he is required to sit back on the throne of the United Kingdom. Apples have been used in traditional folklore for poisoning and love. Think of Snow White and her biting of the poisonous apple, or Aphrodite's apple, or Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. Apples really are a dichotomy in themselves. Raw, they're very good medicinally as a laxative, and cooked, they're very good at treating diarrhoea. So, you know, bit of one, bit of the other. Traditional folk witchcraft has it that if you have any warts upon your body, and being a witch you probably do, then you need to cut an apple in half and rub both halves of the apple over the wart. Take those halves out and bury them in the ground. And as the apple rots, so will the wart. It is also important that if you have an apple tree in your garden, you mustn't pick all of the apples. You must leave one apple for the fairies. If you don't, they will be extremely upset. And let's face it, we don't want to upset the fae, now do we? It is also a sign of utter disaster if you find you've got apple fruits on the tree as well as blooms or something terrible is going to happen. Apple wood is also particularly well used as a wand. Folklore has it that apple wood wands are very good for love spells and also immortality. King Arthur was put to sleep by the great wizard Merlin using a wand of apple wood so tradition states. But I haven't actually ever used an applewood wand. I might go and get one and make a video about it actually because it would be quite interesting, wouldn't it? And let's see if my warts fall off. And finally, apples are great for spells in order to mend cracked relationships. The spell is to get the couple to eat a half each of the same apple and this will bring them together. So now I've given you the overview of the month of October, which is all about Halloween and mainly apples and migration, I think. Let's look at the nitty gritty detail, daily witchcraft and rituals that you can use throughout the month of October. And with that said, we're gonna start on the 2nd of October. The 2nd of October is the Costa Munger Day. A Costa Munger was basically somebody who sold costards, which were a variety of apple from barrels and then this developed into them selling barrel loads of everything you know it's a market stall person isn't it the costa mongers because they were itinerant workers um, they sold everything you know they delved around and got all the leftovers from society and put them in their barrel and took them around they were persecuted they weren't allowed to sell in the smarter denizens of london and so they were pushed out to the east end and into the slums and as a result they elected each year a king and a queen and these are known as the pearly kings and the pearly queens they were people who literally stood up for the Costa Mongers' rights and said, well, they should be allowed to sell their wares. This is now a tradition in the UK, and this tradition happens to fall on the second. The reason why I'm including it here is because of their love of pearls. They believed that using mother of pearl emulated the rich and therefore enabled them to gain access to the higher strata of society. The 4th of October is known as Punky Night and this is a southern UK tradition. This is the time when children would dress up and carve their turnips and gourds and go around singing punky songs which essentially ask people for money. It is obviously a full run into trick or treating or the derivation of the Gaelic and the Celtic traditions from Scotland and Ireland which migrated down south during this month. The 9th of October is the night of the full moon and tonight's full moon is in Aries. The 
full moon for October is known as the blood moon because it, it lit up the night sky so that you can continue the slaughter of your stock and salting of these beasts for winter. Hence why it's called blood moon. Full moons are a time for fulfillment of promises and the culmination of efforts done. And tonight's moon, because it's in Aries, is a fulfillment of promises for facility, for romance, for together and partnerships. And so, should you wish to fulfill your partnership once, you would be blessed by tonight's full moon. The 18th of October is St Luke's Day, which is known traditionally as St Luke's Little Summer. This is a divination day. The weather will be set fair from the 18th of October until the 25th of October. And this is the time in this month when you should pick your fruits, your apples, your pears, because their sap will be dormant at the moment and you have the calm weather to not hinder your progress. 21st of October, this is Apple Day. And Apple Day is the celebration in the UK of all things apple -y. The weekend around this day, it will be our village's Apple Day, where they hire a press and we go down and press all our apples and eat burgers and sausages and talk to our neighbours and have a great, interesting, fun afternoon and taste each other's apple juices because freshly pressed apple juice is delicious. Although, too much of it does have a laxative effect, so beware. The 25th of October is the day of the new moon. Witches believe that new moons are a good time to start developing your ideas for the coming month and to make new plans. Each moon is affected by the astrological sign that it is in, and this month's moon is in Scorpio. Scorpio is all about intensity and sexuality and so it's a really good idea to lay your plans for the coming month for personal empowerment and fulfilment as well as romance and integration with your significant other. The 25th of October there is a partial solar eclipse which happens from 10.08 to 11.51 in this neck of the woods. I don't know where it happens in your neck of the woods, you'll be able to see a third of the sun obscured by the shadow of the moon, but best to do it using a pinhole camera. Solar eclipses were always considered unlucky days, and that is because the sun is darkened. So although this is a, a new moon day and you should be looking at your deepest desires and the energy from the new moon, maybe don't do that today. It might be better for you to look at these new moon issues the day after. Sometimes it's best to do nothing on certain days. Of course, it's Halloween on the 31st or Sawn, whatever you prefer to call it. I will, of course, go into a big Halloween video for everybody out there about the rituals and practices that you can do on this particular day. However, I did want to say that Halloween is a day for divination and especially love divination. In years gone by, when women couldn't have careers or jobs or lifestyle choices, the subject of the person that they were going to marry was of utmost importance to them. Apple bobbing, where you place apples in a bowl of water and try and take a bite from the apple, is about divination. The first girl to bite the apple when they were bobbing would be the first girl to marry her husband in the coming year. If you then went to sleep with an apple underneath your pillow on the night of Halloween, you would dream of your future husband. And of course, the old Halloween spell of brushing your hair and eating an apple whilst looking in a mirror lit only by candlelight at midnight, you will see over your left shoulder the vision of your future love. I do love Halloween. Can't wait to share my Halloween video with you, so do look out for that. So my October coven meeting is coming up and this I think is all going to be about Halloween. We're going to do a Halloween themed coven meeting. Do go to www.patreon.com forward slash Ginny Metherill for more details. There is something for everyone there. You can also get one-to-one -one sessions with me. 
quite exciting. You will not be disappointed, I promise. If you have any particular traditions for Halloween, do let me know in the comments below. I love reading your comments and I do try and reply to as many as possible. If you can't manage to come and join our coven meeting, please do like and subscribe because it really helps the channel and enables me to continue making these videos. Otherwise, I will see you in a few days. <laughs>